In January 2023, classical pianist Yuja Wong pulled off the impossible. I played five Rachmaninoff concertos with Philadelphia Orchestra in Carnegie, in, in one go. Yeah. That's right, it was the Rachmaninoff Marathon. All four piano concertos, plus the Rhapsody on Athema Paganini, played in a single performance at Carnegie Hall with the Philadelphia Orchestra led by Yannick Nezesege. Apparently that's the first time that ever happened in the history of piano. <laughs> Very true. This was completely unprecedented and insanely demanding. These five pieces include two and a half hours of music, 621 pages of score, over 97,000 piano notes, and one outfit for each of the five pieces. This once-in-a-lifetime experience called for a once-in-a-lifetime experiment. We asked Yuja to put on a wearable device to track what happened to her heartbeats during the performance. And she actually agreed to it. So did Yannick, members of the orchestra, and even some audience. This is an experiment that reveals what happens when Rachmaninoff's music touches your heart. Sergei Rachmaninoff wrote music from the heart. He left Russia forever in 1917 to focus mainly as a piano soloist in America. He even completed his own kind of marathon at Carnegie Hall, performing his works over three concerts in three weeks in 1939. Rachmaninoff had a strong connection to Carnegie Hall, and Yuja has a strong connection to Rachmaninoff. When asked about her relationship with the composer, It's going well. <laughs> Rachmaninoff is uh, my big hero as a composer and a pianist, but it's just like, oh. It's like, get into a warm bath. He's playing as a pianist. He's a very, very classy, just noble, cool. Her identity as an artist has been intertwined with the Russian legend, probably because she's played him so much. So many times, it's hard to remember. Um, I guess Rock 2 would be, let's say, 70? 35, oh wow, I doubled it, okay. <laughs> Rock 1, 12? 14, okay. <laughs> Rock 4, uh, 20? Not bad. Rhapsody, 30? Hey, Rock 3, I would say 50. Wow. That's why, like, Rock 3 for me, I can sleep playing it. <laughs> when you just thought about what Rachmaninoff would say at 150 years old, if he was resurrected from the dead and found out about this concert... I don't know, like, show off. <laughs> Despite the New York Times calling it a musical Everest, you just seemed a bit modest because it was obvious to everyone else that if anyone can climb this mountain, it's Yuja Wong. Let's explore some data. This chart shows the program for that evening. It began with the crowd favorite second concerto, then the first, the fourth, the Rhapsody, and then the infamous Rock Three. You know, the piece that did this to Jeffrey Rush in the movie Shine. You can't really play anything after Rock Three, musically. It's just like, it's such a emotional um, mountain Everest. All in all, the concert lasted four hours and 10 minutes, with actual performance time clocking in at two hours and 31 minutes. Now let's see some heartbeats. This axis on the left represents heartbeats per minute, or BPM. These four lines represent the heartbeats of Yuja, Yannick, orchestra, and audience. Now let's take a look at just Yuja's. Wow. <laughs> very, very cool. And we'll add this dotted line here, which shows a resting heart rate at 62 beats per minute. Beautifully, the data forms its own kind of sheet music, and it was easy for Yuja to identify musical moments inside, like the passages where her heart rate took big dips. The first movement, it goes down. And even small dips. Oh yeah, see, in the middle there's a lyrical part. She could spot the music at the start of pieces. Maybe that's like, I go on stage and then that's one two T. It's black. And spot the music where it showed jagged peaks. Goes up in the end. The hardest one was the last variation with the drums. But it's not physically hard, it's just psychologically hard. <laughs> Based on these observations, Yuja was certain about what affected her heart rate. It goes higher when there's more notes. More notes or faster, tempo, or louder. Partially true, but there's more to the story. Yuja hit her third highest heart rate at 139 BPM here during the finale of Rock 2. The second highest rate was 146 BPM during the finale of Rock 3. 
And the highest her heart ever got was 149 BPM, 233% higher than her resting heart rate. And that was during the finale of Rock 4. You may be saying, these are all finales. Yes, but everywhere else, a loud orchestra seemed to make her heart beat fast. Take this sforzatissimo moment in the first movement of Rock 2 at 133 BPM. So when it comes to the theory on volume... It goes higher when there's more notes, or faster, or louder. You just right. Generally speaking, loudness affected heartbeats. And during not loud moments, you guessed it, her heart beat more slowly. There were many soft sounding piano solo moments like this one, where her heart went down to around 90 BPM. What about you just theories on number of notes and speed? It goes higher when there's more notes or faster. Going into this whole thing, we all thought her heart rate would go up if she played a ton of notes really fast. But the data doesn't seem to prove this. The best example is this famously scary section in the third movement of Rock 3. It's called the Black Page because of how many 30 second notes cover it. Yuja's heart rate was the same playing this as this slower section just a minute later. So sheer physical exertion seemed to not be tied to heart rate. If this is true, it makes sense. Skilled pianists conserve their energy through efficient body movement. I think I'm quite economical extremely economical, but it's very misleading because the end of the piece, I always like to do this. But most time, I, you know, they are on the keyboard and quite small movements. And then do any of the concerti feel like more of a workout for you when you're playing? Mm, I think maybe, no, I think it's the same. This is your friendly reminder to take these assumptions with a grain of salt. Let's move on to this chart representing the average BPM per piece and the average BPM per movement per piece. Take a look right here. Yuja's heart rate was second lowest on average during the first piece, Rock 2. Crazy enough, Yuja's heart rate was lowest here than out of every movement in the concert. When asked if she was a stone cold boss for being less nervous at the start. That's, um, <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. You found my secret. Um, <laughs> it's like an Iron Woman or something or poker face. It is Russian music, so. I'm good at poker face. <laughs> I think also, yeah, Rock 2 is not my favorite, so I'm good at, you know, keeping it slow and let it blossom. Now here's Rock 3. It's the most physically crazy and longest of the concerti. And what's so amazing is that Yuja's heart rate was lowest on average during this piece. This not only supports the previous point about physical exertion, but it speaks to the effect that Rock 3 has on Yuja. 3 is like a, have a calming effect for me, <laughs> like a cool down. Yuja definitely acted calm and cool when she had to flip the wearable upside down because the screen started flashing. But what's really interesting is right here. Yuja's heart was higher on average during Rock 1 and Rock 4, and she has the least experience playing these two pieces. For Rock 4, I always prepare probably an hour or an hour and a half before, whereas for Rock 3, maybe like 10 minutes. Rock 2, I was bored. <laughs> Could it be that her heart rate was higher because she didn't play these as much? It's hard to be sure, but it is interesting. And what does Yuja's heart rate look like before and after she took the stage? Well, those finales were certainly exhilarating because Yuja's heart was beating faster after each piece than before. And check out the disparity in Rock 2. It certainly looks like she could play it in her sleep given how low her heart rate was. And when we look at the more unfamiliar Rock 1 and Rock 4, we see her heart beating faster on average before she plays. So how did our conductor, Unique, compare? I worked so much harder than he did, because I had more torques. That's why he was bowing to me. <laughs> and while it looks like he burned less calories and took less steps... You worked harder than me, that's true. But maybe if I did not work as hard, you would have worked even harder. <laughs> that was our goal, and I think you felt free. So actually, that's the best compliment. Thank you, Yuja. Here are his heartbeats compared to Yuja's, with this dotted line showing his resting heart rate. We immediately see Yannick's highest rate was 4 BPMs higher than Yuja's highest during the finale of the Rhapsody. My god, by far. It's by quite far. That's so interesting. That part is so loud from the orchestra. I'm just like, I'm just gonna shake my hand, nobody's gonna hear me. And I'm just there, rushing around to make sure that we keep up with her speed, so maybe that's why the BPM is the highest.
is very, very exciting. It's almost like rock and roll, maybe. And one of the coolest results from this entire experiment, we see a stunning synchronicity between Yuja and Yannick's heartbeats. They were feeling the music in similar ways. Wow, to see all of it going together. I'm very impressed by that. It's really synced. That's why we like to make music. It's like your brainwaves really just thinking about the same thoughts. This is totally, what's that called? Telepathy, yeah. My entire life as a conductor is to bring people in sync. That's why I'm a musician and that's why I'm a conductor. And that's always my goal, but I never thought it would be reflected in really hard beats like this. <laughs> wow, that's very parallel. Four, yeah, see, you know, four is extremely um, integrated. Like, it's like playing chamber music. Everything depends on each other. You know, it's not I'm accompanying him or the other way around. This is just very... Interdependent. Yeah, exactly. And everybody, like, the string depends on the brass, and, and I depend on the brass and strings, everybody. So if one person screwed up, we're all screwed. We're, like, in this one thing. We think about emotion all the time. I felt on that concert that Yuja and I were on the same wavelength. It's very beautiful. I, I find it very moving. Now here is Yuja's average beats per movement compared to Yannick's. Yannick showed slower heartbeats during less intense second movements, and faster heartbeats in more intense third movements. Take a look at this crazy disparity in the second movement of Rock One. One of the quietest movements, and Yuja is so high and Yannick is so low. Where Yuja may have been affected by unfamiliarity, Yannick clearly wasn't. Now I want to show you two case studies I think are very insightful. In the first movement of Rock 3, Yuja tackles the small cadenza, where she plays solo for over a minute and a half. Everyone else rests. Predictably, Yuja's heart rate gradually climbs all the way to the climax. It's the peak heartbeat of the entire movement. As Yannick takes a break, we see his heart rate go down, naturally. But then his heart also goes up slightly while Yuja's playing gets more intense. And not only unique, but the orchestra and audience as well. I find it very beautiful. I, I remember this moment also in the cadenza because it was the last concerto in the evening and I wanted her to nail it. And when you reach this peak alone, it was like, hey, you go girl. <laughs> and maybe that's why uh, my heart went with it. Incredibly, even when no one in the orchestra is playing, the audience's heartbeats go up during emotionally intense sections. And when we check out the finale of Rock 3, the same appears to show itself here as well. The true impact of playing and listening to music is mystical, mysterious. And while this experiment was fascinating, the data can only tell us so much about what this music did to everyone that afternoon. And with no better music than Rachmaninoff's. His music just have this way of moving your emotions. All of a sudden you're like listening, kind of just not even breathing and then just tears coming down. But this is just something even, you don't know what it is, it just like washes over you. And the true impact of this experiment was apparent because it seemed it left quite an impression on how she sees herself as an artist. For sure, it's definitely my first time doing something like this. When I read the data, it's, it's very surprising, unexpected. Lots of it for music for Rachmaninoff. Thank you for your awesome work. <laughs> Maybe we'll get Yuja to track her brainwaves at her next marathon.